Welcome to this C3 World Sociology screencast on population. Now the relationship between population and development is undoubtedly one of the most controversial topics in world sociology. And we're going to break down this topic into three broad areas. Firstly we're going to look at trends and patterns in population. And then we're going to look at various perspectives on population growth. We start by looking at the work of Thomas Malthus and his followers. And then towards the end of the presentation, we'll look at a range of other perspectives that are critical of the Malthusian perspectives. And this presentation closely follows the structure of your worksheet, so make sure that you make plenty of notes as we go through these topics. And this image is meant to represent the fact that we're in the middle of a population explosion at the moment. So in 1830, you can see here that there were one billion people living on the planet. But by 2011, population had increased exponentially to over seven billion people on the planet. And in this map of the world, the size of the countries is not based on their land mass, but based on the size of their population. And note in particular the size of two countries. We've got India here, which is the second most populous country on the planet, and then we've got China, which is currently the most populous uh, country on the planet. And this table shows the 10 most populous countries on the planet at the moment. And if we look at the examples of China and India, we can see that more than 36% of the world's population live in just those two countries. And this graph shows what is projected to happen to the world's population by the middle of this century. So we can see that the projection is that by 2050 we're going to have a population uh, in excess of 9 billion. And what's really significant is that most of that population growth is going to happen in developing countries. And it's in sub-Saharan Africa where we see the population growing the fastest. So this is Uganda, which currently has a population of about 35 million but it's growing at the moment at about a million people per year and the estimated doubling time for the Ugandan population is 21 years and we can see here the effect of that on the structure of the population in Uganda um, a really high number of people under the age of 15 so developing countries such as Uganda have large numbers of children and young people as we can see here and relatively few numbers of older people and we can see that this is represented as a pyramid whereas if we look at a more developed country this is the UK uh, we can see a different structure we can see uh, proportionally fewer young people uh, and a much greater number of older people meaning that the pyramid is partially inverted. Okay let's move on now to consider the implications of this population explosion and we're going to begin by looking at what are called the Malthusian perspectives. At the end of the 18th century which was a period when Britain was undergoing a population explosion an English clergyman called Thomas Malthus put forward an influential argument about population growth. And what Malthus argued was that increases in population would eventually diminish the ability of the world to feed itself. And this was because he believed that the exponential growth of populations expanded in such a way as to overtake the development of sufficient land for crops and food. So he believed that it was inevitable that the population would grow faster than the food supply. And this meant that Malthus was very pessimistic about the future. He believed that population growth would bring about disaster. So famines, diseases, uh, wars over food and land. And these disasters, known as Malthusian checks, he argued, would function to bring population size back down to more sustainable levels. Now today, the followers of Malthus's basic idea that the world cannot support the population explosion are referred to as Neo-Malthusians. And Paul Elric is an example 
of somebody who adopts this position. And for Neo-Malthusians, population growth in developing countries is one of the main causes of their poverty and underdevelopment. So it's seen as leading to hunger, economic stagnation, uncontrollable urbanisation and environmental damage. And therefore, from this perspective, controlling population growth should be one of the main objectives of development policy. And in class, we'll look at some of the ways in which population can be controlled. OK, in the last part of this presentation, we're going to look at some other perspectives that have been critical of the Malthusian view. The pessimistic Malthusian view that human populations grow until they overshoot their carrying capacity has been challenged by Esther Bosserup. According to Esther Bosserup, human populations continue to grow, lifting their environmental carrying capacity as they go. And the reason for this, she argued, is that as human populations increase, they begin to adopt much more productive technologies. For example, uh, developments in agriculture, uh, other systems of ecosystem engineering, increase the carrying capacity of human environments as needed. So the important argument that Bosserup is making is that the Malthusian perspectives are uh, wrong because they ignore the innovations in food production techniques and new technologies. So from this perspective, the type of development work that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation are involved in, uh, the development of agricultural technology in Africa to increase use of things like chemical fertilisers and controversially also the use of genetically modified seeds, has the potential to dramatically increase the carrying capacity of the environment. OK, another really important argument against the Malthusian perspective is the idea that all nations go through a democratic transition as they develop, uh, represented by this particular graph. And what happens over time, according to this model, is death rates fall, followed shortly by birth rates, and this leads eventually to a stabilisation and perhaps even a decline in population. Now this demographic transition model was based on observations by Warren Thompson, an American demographer, of population changes from 1750 onwards. And his original model suggested that countries will pass through four stages of population growth, although modern versions of this model have extended this to five, or in some cases even six stages. And the really important implication of this demographic transition model is that the current population explosion that we see in developing countries is only a temporary phenomenon and will sort itself out as those nations develop further. And therefore this model turns Malthus's approach upside down. Rather than seeing poverty and lack of development as the consequences of high population growth, it sees them as the causes. In other words, a high birth rate might be a response to poverty, uh, not its underlying cause. And we can see in this graph that as countries become wealthier, uh, the rate of population increase declines. Finally, there's one other main criticism of the Malthusian perspectives. There are some sociologists who would argue that population isn't really the problem at all. Instead, they argue that there are enough resources to go around, but the problem is that the rich world consumes more than its fair share. So this is a map of the world based on consumption levels, and it's colour-coded, so the countries that have this uh, deep red colour are those countries that are consuming far in excess of a fair share of the world's resources. So whilst famines affect some poorer regions of the world, the rich world is panicking about an impending crisis of obesity.